All right. Hello, the internet. I'm here with Troy Batterberry. Hi, Troy. Hi. Thanks for uh, coming and seeing us. Thanks for having me. Now, everybody wants to save money, and more importantly, everybody wants to help the environment and to be more green. You're going to tell us about a new service called Microsoft Home that allows us to do both those things. Tell us about it. What is it? Absolutely. So it's a, it's a free service. It's a free application available to anyone in the U.S. and eventually the world. And it allows you as, as a homeowner or a head of a household to go in, provide some information about your household, some different characteristics. And in the case where we have partnerships in place with the local utility, we'll also be able to ingest your historical usage information and your pricing information. We'll take all of that data and we'll run it through some really complicated algorithms and we'll shield the end user from all that, that complexity and we'll answer three basic questions for the homeowner. The first is, how is my energy being spent across different categories throughout the house? How do I compare to others in, in a similar neighborhood or a similar situation? And then lastly, what can I do to save on my energy bill? What type of lifestyle changes can I make? What type of improvements can I make to the home such that my energy consumption will be less. Right, so this is going to be a free web-based tool That's right. that anybody can access and uh, you enter in some details about your house, where you live, the, how, you know, what kind of home you live in and the second component there was getting some information from the utility. Can you show us a demo? Can we see it in action? Absolutely. So if you visit Microsoft.com uh, home.com. Oh, so home and it's H-O-H-M. H-O-H-M. Which is a, not a spelling mistake. No, in fact, ohm is a unit of electrical resistance in the energy industry, and we chose that kind of creative spelling because we wanted the brand to be unique. We wanted people to be able to recognize it, and we also wanted a short, easy-to-spell name. Cool, so microsofthome.com. Correct. So when you visit this URL you'll, and hit this landing page, you can go ahead and try and sign up for the application. And it only prompts you to answer two basic questions. Okay. The first is your zip code. And we're asking for that because uh, your energy consumption will vary considerably based on where you live in the United States. Right. If you're in a cold climate or in a hot climate. Exactly. Sure. So uh, the amount of heating that you need in South Miami very different than the amount of heating you need in Fargo, North Dakota. Sure. And through the very use, different feel. Yes. <laughs> and for, for through the use of that zip code, uh, we can immediately get going on some analytics that provide value to the end user. So here I've provided the answers to those two questions. The other one being the preferred email address. Sure. And just the postcode there, or the zip code, is that that's for Redmond here in in uh, Washington State. Yeah. Let's State. go. Let's go ahead and use Redmond. Okay. And Which is where Microsoft is based here yep. in uh, the U.S. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Go. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up some information about Redmond, Washington. And remember those three questions that I referred to. Uh, the first question it's going to try and answer is it's going to give me a breakdown using a pie chart of the average energy consumption across some different areas within the home for Redmond, Washington. So we can see that heating here in Redmond is the dominant area of consumption uh, and, and then lighting being a, a smaller uh, area. On the right here we have a spectrum of efficient homes versus average homes in terms of their energy consumption for here in Redmond. And again, all you've put in now is your zip code and your email address and you've also signed up with your Windows Live ID, but at the moment it's just giving you some general statistics about where you live. You haven't actually put any information in yet. That's correct. So the real goal of the application is to get the user to complete their home profile right. so that we have richer demographic and psychographic information about the, the homeowner and, and the household and so forth so that we can really take all that raw data and provide some actionable information around it. And we actually use some, some very complex uh, algorithms from Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories in mm -hmm. the Department of Energy to model the house. And in, and in fact, we actually walk through every hour of every day throughout the course of an entire year to run simulations of that house against historical weather conditions on average for each hour of each day of every year. Wow. And so there's a lot of complexity in this modeling, but that complexity allows us to be more accurate. Now, as the system grows in its maturity and more users sign up to the system, uh, those recommendations will get even more accurate because we'll have more data to work with. And a good analogy to think about is when Amazon first launched its book recommendation business, you know, years ago, 
uh, those recommendations probably weren't so accurate. But right. as more and more people bought books and used the site and so forth, the recommendation engine learned from the action of individual users. Well, the same is true with home. We're not starting at ground zero because we license some of these rich analytics, but we'll build upon it and really provide additional accuracy over time. So here I can just uh, give you a sample of some of the different questions that are answered, or different questions that are posed rather, uh, the year it's built, the number of stories, the type of heat that it has, and so forth. And I'm just going to answer the, what we refer to as the basic or the essential questions. It turns out that as a homeowner, you don't have to answer any questions. The more data you provide, the more accurate the recommendations will be. The less data you provide, the less accurate they'll be. Sure. So I've, I've answered some basic questions, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. I'm not going to tunnel into all the in individual categories, as a homeowner could, to provide even more data. There are actually 200 questions that are posed throughout this, this application. Wow, I see doors and windows. Is that talking about perhaps double glazing versus single glazing exactly. and how heat escapes out of your house. Exactly. Wow. So you can dive in and also run simulations to say, well, what if I put in triple pane windows with, with argon gas in them? How much will that actually save me? So you can do lots of Apart what... Apart from sounding really cool. Yeah. So lots of uh, what ifs. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. And what it's going to do now is it's going to detect that, hey, you have a local utility provider in your area that's offering up data feeds so that you can ingest your, your, your historical usage and pricing information. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simulate it using a fake utility that we have out on the internet to, to uh, simulate the different data exchange. But it's going to propose uh, three basic questions for me. What's my customer account number? Mm -hmm. how, much is on my, how much was my last energy bill? And what's my service address? And that information will be provided back to the utility, and the utility can go ahead and authenticate that information to prove that I'm, I really am the account holder, and then go ahead and provide those data feeds. Sure, and obviously if you have your most recent bill in front of you, the information is there to, to enter already. You don't need to remember a off the top of your head. A absolutely, yep. And I, not only does the application work for electricity, but it also works for gas as well. So I can go ahead and do the same thing to get my gas usage information and answer those same questions, but for a different type of bill. You're doing a very good job remembering these numbers here. Yeah, I've typed these in a few times in a row in the oh. last couple of weeks. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, and once again, I can click on connect. And, and what's going on in the background now is the applications reaching out to those, those simulated utilities it's providing answers to the secret questions. It's being authenticated. And assuming I, I typed correctly, the information is now flowing from both of those utilities into the uh, home application. Sure. And that information is being made available uh, for, for the analytics to process. Now, if I don't have a utility partner in my area yet, I still have the option to manually enter in that, that information to help improve the accuracy of the analytics. Or I can choose to forego that step, and that'll just reduce the accuracy of those recommendations a little bit. Right. We really had a guiding principle of we wanted anyone to be able to use the tool, and we didn't want to put heavy restrictions on how much data you needed to provide and so forth. We really wanted people to just use the tool as they saw fit. Sure. So now that I've provided all of that, that information, what I can do is I can actually uh, go ahead and try and run my, my energy report. And what this energy report will do is it'll take all of that rich data that we aggregated from you entering it in and from your local utilities and we'll process it through these, these very extensive uh, uh, home energy audit report analytics to provide some, some information about your energy usage. And you can kind of scroll down in here and get a better sense of where your different uh, how your energy is being used, breakdowns of the months, as well as recommendations and, and how much you might save. And I'll come back to that in a second. So if I go back to my, my, my dashboard now, I'll actually be able to see uh, where I stand in terms of, of others and my energy consumption. And as you can see, 
I'm a little bit above average compared to uh, the average home in, in Redmond, so I've got some savings to do. I've got some improvements that I should sure. probably consider making. Uh, so if I go into the recommendations page, what it'll show is a list of the different recommendations that are potentially suitable for me based on the information that I provided. And some of the recommendations don't cost anything in terms of implementing. Uh, I can do something as, as simple as turning down the temperature on my water heater. And in this particular case, it looks like I might actually reap some pretty significant savings in terms of doing that. I can... Uh, I, I like the third one here with uh, making your computer display to use a low power setting when not in use. I think you know, some people may not realize that their monitor remains at a high power state when they're not using it. And you can potentially save up to, what's that, $37 a year.